Thank you very much. I'm trying very hard to ask something that sounds sensible. Um, <clears throat> what is the status of the um, extraterrestrial intelligence research now? So I think we're just getting in the game. We're learning how to do this. And I think we'd be lucky to find, even though I'm, I'm optimistic about life and intelligent life in the universe, uh, and it's likely there, there's a whole galactic internet out there, uh, I think we'd be lucky to find them now. But I'm optimistic in the long run. Congressman Johnson, uh, uh, my point out that contrary to popular impression, this experiment isn't the same from day to day. People figure we're sitting around with earphones, you know, listening to uh, mm -hmm. cosmic static every day, a rather tedious job if, it's that, if that's what it were, but it's not. It's, of course, all the listening is done by computers. But the really important point is that much of this experiment depends on digital technology computers, if you will. And as you know, there's something called Moore's Law, which says that whatever you can buy today for a dollar, you can buy twice as much for a dollar two years from now. There is this very rapid growth in the capabilities there. So, in fact, the search is speeding up, and it is actually speeding up exponentially, a very heavily overused word, exponentially, but, in fact, it applies. Uh, to tell me this, uh, I know that uh, the improvement of technologies are, are important, and yet some of the old technologies, or old techniques are also still in play. How do you predict your advancement uh, based on what you have available to you for research tools? I will just say something. I am sure Dan has much to add to this. But in terms of what we can do in the near future, the foreseeable future, what you really, I think, need to do if you want to have a decent chance of success, of success and mind you, this has to remain speculative. I mean, this is all like asking Chris Columbus two weeks out of Cadiz, you know, hey, have you sound, found any new continents lately? And his answer would be, well, there was only water around the ship today. And by the way, also yesterday, water around the ship. And tomorrow it's going to be fairly aqueous in the vicinity of the ship. Okay. <laughs> but so he can't predict when, when anything interesting is going to happen, nor can we. But if you look at what are called euphemistically estimates, and they are guesses as to what fraction of stars out there have somebody that you might be able to pick up? It sounds like you have to look at a few million star systems to have a reasonable chance of success. We can't do that today. We have not done that today. We have done less than 1 percent of that as of today. Okay? But given the predictable advancements in technology, to look at a few million star systems is something that can be done within two dozen years, given you know, the funding to do it. Okay. Seth captured it well. Now, when we find the other life on other planets, what do you speculate we'd find and what is the value or potential value? Um, I think it's profound either way. Um, this, is, this is not an expensive thing. Uh, it's a, of order a million dollars a year. We, we're funded by National Science Foundation, NASA, Templeton Foundation, some private donations. Uh, the reason I think it's profound either way, if we if we discover that we are alone, we better take really good care of life on this planet. It's very precious. Uh, and the other thing is profound too. If we if we are find that we're part of a galactic community and get on the galactic internet and learn all their poetry, music, literature, science, uh, we could learn a lot. I, I just add briefly, nobody knows what we'll learn. Uh, if we can decode the signal, this is sort of like being confronted with the hieroglyphics. You know, you, you might be able to figure them out. In the case of the hieroglyphics, it wasn't so hard. It turns out the hieroglyphics were written by humans, so that made it a lot easier. And there was also the Rosetta Stone and whatever. Mm -hmm. But we might not ever figure it out. Okay? If you could, you will be listening to data being sent by societies that are far in advance of us, because we are hearing them, not the other way around. Okay? So they are more they are more advanced, and maybe they teach you some very important stuff. Who knows? I mean, imagine that the Incas find a barrel that is washed up on the shore, you know, maybe from Europe, and it is filled with books. If they could ever figure out the books, they would learn a lot of interesting stuff. I don't know that we will ever figure out the books, but even if we don't, the important point has been made, and that is we have calibrated our place not in the physical universe, we have sort of done that, but calibrated our place in the biological and and even more, the intellectual universe. And I think that that is maybe good for our souls to know how we fit in. 
Thank you very much. My time is expired. Thank you, Ms. Chairman.